Parallels 26 just came out. If you ship code on a Mac but still need Windows and Linux, this update removes some of the annoying friction and tightens the workflows developers actually use. Look at this guy. How embarrassing. Not to mention all the space he's taken up. See, this is the type of situation that I'm hoping to avoid whenever I'm working away from my desk or remotely while traveling. Well, I wouldn't actually do that, but I was just trying to prove a point here. Because I still get comments like, why don't you just use your two desktops? Well, that would be even harder to set up in a coffee shop, wouldn't it? So I have a MacBook Pro for iOS, Android, and JavaScript web app development. I also have my PC laptop, and this year I really like the ZenBook Duo. That runs my Visual Studio and SQL Server for my .NET front-end and back-end projects. But I still prefer just to carry one laptop with me. And sometimes I tack on an extra monitor. Now up until 2013, I was a die-hard PC developer. .NET and SharePoint every day. And then a MacBook outpaced my top-tier Lenovo running virtual Windows. Windows Server. That flip changed everything for me. Since then, Windows lived as a virtual machine for my .NET projects, and the Mac has handled mobile and everything else for me, and I didn't look back. When Apple rolled out Apple Silicon in 2020, a lot of us got nervous. We'd all been living in the x86 world, and suddenly everything had to run on ARM architecture. That included Windows, Visual Studio, and tools I use every day. And right in that moment, Parallel stepped up. They were the first virtualization software authorized by Microsoft to run Windows 11 virtual machine on Apple Silicon. And that gave them a huge head start while others were still figuring things out. And honestly, they never gave up that lead to this day. Yes, it's paid software, but it's one of those cases where you get what you paid for. And if you're a professional making money with your computer, then it kind of pays for itself pretty quickly. By the way, if you're not using it yet, you want to try it, use my code down below, get a discount, and you support the channel. All right, story time. Years ago, I took a contract where the rule was crystal clear. PC laptops only running Windows Server. So I rolled in with my MacBook anyway, fired up Windows Server VM, joined their domain, and got to work. And guess what? Nobody cared what machine I was actually using. They cared that the job got done. So I finished the entire contract without ever touching a PC laptop. Right now I've got Windows 11, that's running Visual Studio. I got a couple of instances of Linux here, and this one's running Docker and SQL Server. And I even have a virtual Mac OS running over here as one of my virtual machines. And this is actually running Mac OS 26, which is Tahoe. So I can test my tools and scripts before I commit to installing it on my host. My host is still running Sequoia 15.6.1, but all of this runs side by side without a reboot. Here's what's changed that actually matters to devs and power users. First, Parallels 26 is fully optimized for Mac OS 26 Tahoe. And as you can see, it's backwards compatible too. Apple tightened background process rules this year and Parallels adapted the core pieces. Setup and coherence mode. Oh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, here is coherence mode. Basically, I can run my applications that are running inside a Windows virtual machine, but I'm on my Mac OS desktop. Yeah, it is kind of a dirty desktop, but don't look at that part. <laughs> look at this part in front here. There's also a more refined UI. The menu bar and dock icons match Mac OS's 26 look. Small thing, but when you live in these things every day, consistency kind of matters. Also, Windows VMs can now see your Mac's actual free disk space. Before, big installs inside a VM could run past your host limit and surprise you with freezes or reboots. Now Windows gets the real number for Mac OS so you can make sane decisions mid-install instead of guessing. Also, it seems like Parallels is committed to keeping pace as Apple iterates Tahoe across the year. You kind of have to do that when you want to stay ahead of the competition. I want to show you a couple of other new things I started using since the last time I showed you this stuff. Here I am working in VS Code in my host Mac OS. And of course I still have my Parallels extension for VS Code, which allows me to control everything right here. I can take snapshots. What's cool is something I didn't use before is, let's say I have this uh, Ubuntu instance right here. I can click on this little button and I'm inside the terminal on my Ubuntu instance right there in VS Code from my host. So I can do things like uh, sudo apt install, node.js for example. And there we go. Now I have Node installed. What? <laughs> On my virtual machine. So I don't have to deal with going in there, opening up the browser, downloading stuff. Or if you're a little bit more terminal oriented, I don't need to go in there and do sudo apt in the virtual machine. I can do it right from the host. This is something I wasn't using before, but it's a powerful thing. When you're done, 
just hit exit if you can spell back at the host terminal and I can use copilot here to control every aspect of my virtual machines from the terminal if I ever forget the CLI oh yeah the CLI that's something new too. something new to me check this out start my Ubuntu machine give it eight cores and 12 gigs let's see if I can stump it okay it tells me run the command in the terminal I'm gonna just accept it because that's an agent you know you just accept things nowadays you know <laughs> uh, who cares what happens no be careful okay so detect it that the machine was actually running and it's gonna say you should stop it first and then you can set the cpus to 8 and the memory to 12 gigs and then you can continue there we go vm has been stopped vm has been configured vm has been <laughs> how cool is that before you had to go into control center you had to make sure the computer shut down you had to go into one of these little cog wheels go to find the hardware tab cpu and memory adjust it everything can be done with a cli now and there we go i'm on my ubuntu instance i have eight cores and i have 12 gigs of memory take a snapshot and there it is it's going to take a snapshot of that machine boom done it's under snapshots there it is if you're new to this snapshot is basically a frozen image in time of the state of your virtual machine so if you ever install any kind of software if you go to any websites that you shouldn't be going to especially doing work or downloading any kind of bad stuff not that you ever would do that but if you were and you got infected then you would just back up to the previous snapshot and it's like nothing ever happened i used to use that a lot because i, I would take different branches in my code before i learned git uh new topic why is this important because now everything is scriptable you can live in your ci cd pipeline this plays nicely with github actions you can orchestrate your virtual machines and here you have a catalog this is beyond the scope of this video which is just an introduction but let me know if you want to know about this and we can dig a little deeper basically this will allow you to have your own catalog of virtual machines that you can manage and easily deploy images i showed an ai setup uh, in a previous video i'll link to that video down below in case you're curious now one of the cool things that the pro version gives you and that's the version I recommend because you get all the options is in the hardware you can actually use a lot of processors you can assign processors to your virtual machine so my computer has 32 processors I think cores all right you got me I should know this oh it has 16 oops I'm trying out too many computers lately. And I can assign anything from one to 14 processors to my virtual machine. I can probably do 16, but it's gonna complain, isn't it? Yeah, it says using all Mac processors will cause system stability issues. So you probably don't wanna mess with that. And then using an odd number of processors may cause Windows to freak out. So don't use an odd number. So let's set it to 14. And then memory is how much RAM you wanna allocate. Now my host has 128 gigabytes of RAM and I can allocate most of it to my virtual machine it can go up to 112 it says here what if i do a little bit more than that let's just do 120 and see what happens here so using so much memory may degrade performance but you really don't need that much it's just a fun experiment let's try it it says your mac configuration doesn't allow virtual machine with such amount of memory start anyway hey that's what i'm here for is to mess around okay well it started <laughs> <laughs> let's see this is my host mac os memory and look at that there's my windows machine i also have the linux machine two linux machines running on this and a virtual mac os and my windows machine is taking up 117 gigabytes of memory i just want to see that inside task manager and windows let's go to performance and look at that 113 gigabytes available i can do a lot of things with that by the way the gpu automatically gets half so we have 58.6 gigabytes available for the GPU if you need to do some GPU related tasks and I hear that maybe very soon there's going to be some DirectX 12 support for those of you that are interested right now DirectX 11 is supported but that's just a rumor if you're a gamer you can game on Windows but it's going to be a little choppy there's things you can do to tweak it and check out Andrew Tsai's channel for that uh, he does a lot of virtualization and gaming specifically so if you're interested in that check out his channel but i'll keep my focus on development here however i just 
wanted to show you real quick that games that don't work on the Mac at all will actually work on a virtual Windows machine. There is a little bit of weirdness going on, but it's kind of playable. So here developers get the best mix in my opinion on the pro version. Snapshots for fearless testing, cross OS tool chains in one bag, and an AI package in the VS Code extension to bootstrap local AI workflows and VMs. Especially if you're just learning how to use AI and how to set that up, this will give you an entire package without having to install things manually. You can just get going. Now, if you have an older version of Parallels and if you haven't upgraded in a while, you also pick up a few fan favorites from the recent releases. You can use Apple writing tools like Rewrite and Summarize right inside Windows apps. And if you're having meetings and you want to share your Windows screen, the OBS virtual camera flows straight into Windows conferencing or capture apps without the usual hacky workarounds. One of my favorite things in Windows is to be able to right click and say new text document. I can't do that on a Mac. It doesn't let me. There's nothing like that there. I'm sure somebody created an extension by now, but on Windows, I can do it. New text document. Boom. And there it is. Boom.txt on my Mac. <laughs> That's the kind of sharing you can actually enable. You don't have to. You can have complete isolation between the environments. Uh, probably safer bet, but this is also possible. There's a bunch of things that happen under the hood too. Faster snapshot switching, improved network handling, especially around VPNs, host only networking that actually works and drag and drop and clipboard behavior that you actually expect. And there's a preview for running x86 VMs on Apple Silicon for compatibility testing and legacy workflows. That's actually what I'm using here. It says Ubuntu 24.04 with Rosetta, which is where I set up my SQL Server environment. So for me, Parallels is about carrying one machine and saying yes to whatever tool a project needs. Don't say yes to every project, but say yes to the tools that every project needs. I only carry this thing, that's it. And I have Windows, Linux, multiple versions of Linux, multiple versions of Windows, multiple versions of Mac OS, and the host system, everything. They all can talk to each other. They all can network together. You can create a farm of virtual machines. Is there a vendor SDK that you're not familiar with that you don't wanna install on your host system? Spin up a virtual machine, try it out, then blow it away. Run SQL Server for integration testing, and then jump back to Xcode on the same machine. No desk shuffle, no second laptop, no KVMs or anything like that. You can download the free trial using the link below. If you do decide to purchase, consider using my code down below as well, which will give you a discount and it'll support the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.